guys, it's Jake with Boating Tech Talk. Today we're going to be looking at cutting larger gauge wire and crimping a termination to an MRBF fuse connected to our fuse block which would in turn come to our battery. You can see here we've got our solar charge controller with our 10 gauge wire coming down to our fuse holder. The next piece of wire we have is a number 4. It kind of goes against what you would think going 10 is smaller, 4 is larger. And then when we move to our battery cabling, we'll actually be going to 2 watt or 2 zero. It comes down in increments. So we have 10 all the way to zero. This is four, so it's in between. And then here it's actually two zero, so it's two sizes bigger than zero. Doesn't exactly line up with the way you'd usually like to think of increasing size, but that's the way we measure wire. So this is a number four cable. You can see here it already stripped it but looking at it again it's maybe not lining up exactly making a nice even curve with where I'd like it to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it off back to where we'd like it. So somewhere here what I like to do is take the lug that I'm going to be using, the ring terminal, screw that down a little bit and just make sure it's the correct size. It's okay if you have to do these a couple times and you mess one up you can cut it off and do it again but to be Doing them over and over again can get quite costly, so a small thing to make sure you always do is make sure that you have the right ring size for the terminal. So we're going to measure that this is roughly where the terminal would sit and our wire is going to come all the way up and butt into the end of the terminal here. So if we hold that there, we would say we can cut it right here. So we're going to take our cutters here have a couple different names depending on where you come from. For me I call these parrot beaks, they can be eagle beaks, whatever you like really, they're big heavy duty battery cutters. You can mark this too sometimes but we're just demonstrating right now so I'm going to go ahead open these up. It can be awkward to use these, it's never easy to hold everything, have an extra set of hands helps but what I like to do is kind of tuck it under my shoulder here and then have this hand operating the cutters, bring it down, start it slowly. As it kind of grips and you know the cable, you can feel it, it's not moving up and down in the cutters. Come back, both hands, and cut. You have a nice clean cut there, no extra strands sticking out. So now we would come back to our fuse. We're looking for where our lug is gonna sit, right there. Measuring out where to strip the cable. Always remember that it needs to come to the very end of this lug. If it's not all the way to the end of the lug, you don't have good connectivity. It can cause problems with amp flow and connection later on. So we're gonna measure it there, mark it, and then strip it. This, I like to go carefully around the cable with my knife. So you should be able to see that you're starting to get a break on the insulation. You need to be careful not to go too deep, otherwise you're going to lose strands of your cable. And if you do notice that you lose strands, it's okay, it's just fine, cut it back shorter and try again. So stripping there, you can see it start to come away. Take the tip of the knife into there, slide it along carefully. You can see we lost one or two strands, that's okay, it's a larger gauge cable and it should just peel off nicely. Everything's still nice and straight. You don't want to see any sticking off out to the side because as we go to slide this on there, you'll see that it'll actually stick out and sometimes it can pierce through the heat shrink as we slide it on. So when you go to put the lug on, what we're looking for is all of the strands fit in there nicely and it butts up perfectly to our insulation there. You should be able to go all the way around and not see any wire sticking through. And you can feel that it's reached the very end of this lug right here. So the next step will be to crimp that down. And we're using big heavy duty crimpers here that have multiple sizes. So rather than having one tool that would do one size, this actually has multiple and there's a chart for us on the side to tell us which gauge of wire which die lines up with. 
So you can see this one's already set up for number four. It's K and K, which lines up with our chart. So we're using this lower die here as we insert the lug. Again, it's a little bit awkward. Sometimes you use under the arm and my right hand or left hand, depending if you're right or left-handed, or sometimes depending on how much room you have in the boat. If you're crawling in somewhere, trying to reach up and get the lug on there, it can be pretty difficult. So being ambidextrous with these tools definitely helps. So again, you can see it's a little bit loose on there. Same principle, come over, holding it tight to the insulation, like so. Start the crimp, same as the cutters, until you can use two hands. I like to check and make sure it's butted nicely up to my insulation and then crimp. You should hear them close all the way and then release. So you can see there, we definitely came all the way up to our insulation and there's room here for another crimp. So to get good connection all the way down because our wire is coming all the way to the end of this lug, we're going to do a second crimp. On our bottom die again, K for number four cabling. Get it tight, started on there, and then crimp, like so. So we have our crimp. Now we have two crimps down on our lug, and as we pull on it, it's definitely in there tight. The reason we do two is inside this barrel, if you want to picture a tube, you want as much of that tube compressed around the wire inside of it as possible. So the wire comes all the way to the end and we've compressed it the whole way along. It's pushed up hard against the jacket and hard against the lug. So the next step is we're ready for our heat shrink. We've got heat shrink here. We're sliding it over. What we're looking for is roughly two inches of heat shrink. Uh, doing electrical audits personally, when I look for thing the like battery connections and larger gauge wire connections like this, I'm always looking for good amounts of heat shrink. Too much is just excessive. You don't need to go overboard, but too little is definitely not good. So it's always better. I take like three fingers or even two fingers, depending on the cable and make sure I've got enough heat shrink there. We don't want to on the side here where the terminal comes flat, where it will be connected to our stud. This surface here is actually the connection point for the cable. So we don't want any heat shrink on that flat part. It needs to be further back so that none of the heat shrink will impede as we go to connect it here. So having it back like this is ideal. We're gonna take our butane torch again. And it doesn't matter which end you start from. I typically like to start at the lug end, but pick an end, don't come around. Start from the top and work your way down and you'll see it start to shrink down with, against the cable and you won't have any air trapped in there that way. So you can see it's starting to come down around the lug. A good indication as well is you can actually see the indents of your crimp through the heat shrink. It's a very methodical process. I actually really enjoy doing this. Coming down nice and even, we're getting to the end. It's all shrinking down evenly against it and we have a nice little flare at the end. We're just gonna shrink down. And there you go. What you're looking for as well is resin. There's actually resin inside this heat shrink which helps seal it. So you're looking sometimes too to make sure that the resin has actually seeped and stuck down to the cable. Now that we have our heat shrink on, we're gonna connect it here to our MRBF fuse, which is connected to our bus bar. In turn, we'll eventually we'll connect up to our battery. So you can see here, the way we've stacked this is this holder, this bear like this, and then our fuse goes on. 
With these MRBF fuses, it's nice to always have, this is the fuse here, same as you have in these smaller ATO fuses or ATC fuses. This will actually be broken when, it's, when the fuse is blown. So if you only have access to this side of the bus bar, I would put it there so that you can see it or the other way around. So that's always visible. If you don't always have a multimeter handy, it's nice to have that visible cue of, I can see that this fuse is blown now. The next thing that we would put on is our terminal, our lug. The lug goes on next because we have from the post, a direct connection to here through our fuse, and then a direct connection to there, the top of our fuse. Next is the washer, the lock washer, and the nut. The reason that we always make sure that these washers are in that order is they're stainless washers, which are not a good conductive material. And having poor conductivity through that to the fuse can lead to other issues in your circuit. So that's how we would connect a fuse block to a terminal block that's an unswitched distribution to our battery. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this PYS video. If you've got further questions, please ask them below or send us an email via the contact forms on our website. Happy to donate my time to share information with you. You can support us in keeping this channel ad-free by purchasing some merchandise on our store or by making a donation on PayPal. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.